All right, hello and welcome. I am Kirsten. And I'm Greenberry. And this is the Adult Buddy Finders podcast. That's right. And if you're coming back, thank you so much for coming back. But if you're listening for the first time, we are talking about that kind of buddy. Oh, yeah. That adult kind. Yeah. So if you're not an adult, uh, keep it moving. This is not for you. This is adult themes, and we are talking about adult Adult. stuff. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, today, what are we talking about? Oh my goodness, I'm really excited. Oh, so me too. Today we have a dominatrix. Yes. Oh, I, I can't, if you don't know what that is, you're going to find out so much about it. We're uh, all going to learn. Right? Like we do every episode. Yeah. It's funny, actually, I knew about a dominatrix and knew about, like a friend of a friend of a friend was a dominatrix. And... We've, we've met some people who know oh, some yeah. people. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> And uh, she was a dominatrix in New York. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, who we have today was also a dominatrix in New York. Ooh, big city dom. The person who I don't even know the name of. Maybe they know each other. (laughs) I know a few dominatrix eyes. You know, like that's the plural of it, dominatrix. Uh That's right, right? That's science. Um. (laughs) You you, would kill it as a dominatrix. (laughs) Uh, you think? Oh yeah, because <laughs> I know it's science the science for it. Uh-huh. Cool. You're stuttering. I think stuttering is a big thing. Uh, would you please uh, d- 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 take me seri- Take me seriously. Mm-hmm. Oh, there it is. That, <laughs> I could be stern. Uh, wait. So you were saying something about you knew? Wait. Yeah, saying? I know Diamondatrice. I was just telling you, bragging about oh, people you're just I bragging know. About it. I've been in a theater company with a girl, and then like another girl who's in comedy. You know, want to know mm-hmm. all the people? I, how many names I need to drop? I don't know their dom names. <laughs> Just like <laughs> so far, anytime I try to remember somebody's name, like I don't know it, but I know, I know, but I know of, them. I know something. <laughs> I know something. You know, I think I would be an awesome dominatrix. Really? Yeah, yeah. I really think I could kill it. <laughs> Because you're so, you're such like a, uh, I would say you're a um, sensitive, emotional, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, timid might not be the right word, but Mm -hmm. like, you know, a little reserved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't think that uh, you uh, with a whip and a ball gag would, uh, would happen. I'm like the the big CEO that you know tells everyone what to do and then goes home and wants to be the submissive, you know, locked in the closet. <laughs> oh, um, so you're the dominatrix. So I'm the opposite. You're the su- <laughs> so in my normal life, I'm very I'm much more shy and and step back and kind and um, oh. my home life. I think I'd be really good of just telling you could- someone to to piss off and that they're just a piece of crap. I think I'd be awesome at it. Do you think you could wear the the dick? Oh, that's not what I thought you were going to say. I thought you were going to say leather. I was like, oh, well, I can wear leather. <laughs> Even when it's hot? I, I, You know, I'm cold most of the time, oh. so that leather would be awesome. <laughs> could I wear the dick? That is a good question. Yeah. Um, could you wield the, the, the thing? There's a name for that. It, it's oh, a strap, um, a deal, strap on, strap on. There yeah. it is. I think there's other names too to be more specific. Maybe we'll of find like out what and where and how, and how it goes. Yeah, we really need to get a, cho- a toy expert oh, on our show. I'll put. The, I'm gonna yeah. put that on the list of yeah. potential topics. If you want to know more about toys, if you know somebody who knows something about toys, if you want to talk about toys, put it on Facebook. Let us know. Yeah, we'd love to learn more. So you think you're a uh, a timid a timid in IRL, but it, a, a timid on the streets, but a dom in the sh- sheets or the yeah. dungeon or yeah. wherever you got to be. Yeah, oh. I think so. I think I could let that that side out. Okay, are I, you gonna I don't try? Know. You might too. I've heard about your road rage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know if my partner would be very open to me slapping him or, like, I try to ask him to like go on a walk with me, and he's like, nah. So <laughs> I don't think. I don't think my powers of persuasion are enough. In my mind, I'm like, yes, I'll be in leather and I'll tell you what to do. But then it would go like, 
no. <laughs> You're already halfway there, though. You already played a, a dominatrix. That's true. I did play one on television. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> to like find it? out more, but <laughs> this is my clips on. I did like it. I thought that was a really fun character, and I thought it was a clever way to like uh, to just like basically like explore college sexuality in in a unique lens because at first it was like she's supposed to be the girl who makes out with anyone or everyone and then all of a sudden <laughs> there was a unique character in the cast that they, I was like I don't really feel safe uh, kissing this guy but I would like slap his butt I'll spank him yes and we all came to terms with like that was the best way to go forward <laughs> with the project and it totally evolved the character how how does your husband feel about you spanking other men <laughs> you know I guess he doesn't feel too strongly because he's never like he's never talked <laughs> to me about it did you talk to him did you sit him down and you say look I have this scene and I have to spank a man. How do you feel about it? Are you are you okay with it? Are you open to my spanking? You know, I think honestly, I would feel I it feels like a lot less intimate to me than than to kiss somebody. Like that to me I'm like, okay, I would have to kind of like chat with him to be like, I think this project is worth it for everyone involved and um I'm going to be uh kissing this guy. So you did not have a conversation about spanking. <laughs> never. I'll never tell. He'll never listen his fault (laughs) okay so we know so much and probably so little we really don't know much about dominatrix stuff but we are very interested in it we think we know a lot of people who've done it but today we're talking to an amazing dominatrix do you know more about her oh my gosh she's um, she's incredible she is she does voiceover work she's an actor she's a writer narrator Her name is Rachel Music. Rachel Music. Yes, and she is one hell of a dominatrix. She even has a short film on it. Oh, cool. Yeah. Hang around with you. All right, so we have Rachel Music. Welcome. Thank you. So good to be here. We're so excited, and I'd love to know, I I was reading a bit about your bio, but maybe in your own words, because you have a a lot of things that you've accomplished and that you do, like your music and comedy and writing, and and if you want to talk a little bit about, like, who is Rachel Music? Oh, geez. I, I, spin, I spin a lot of plates. Uh, I, I am most, I'm most right now uh, writing, but before I, I learned that I really wanted to be a writer, I tried to do uh, literally everything else. Uh, I was a dog walker, a bar back, you know, an opera singer. I was, doing, I was in a band for a while. Um, but the most, the most significant kind of odd job I had, the oddest of the odd jobs, you yeah. could say, was when I was a dominatrix in college. Okay. Uh, and then subsequently worked on and off with sex work. Uh, for the next three years. Interesting. Yeah. Which is, I mean, we want to know everything about you, but we really want to know about this dominatrix stuff. Oh, yeah. well, cool. How, how did you get started? What what brought you into that yeah. world? <laughs> well, um, it's kind of a funny, it's kind of a funny story. So the the last real acting that I did um, was also the most fun I ever had on stage, and I had to play Queen Elizabeth, Ronald Reagan, and Hitler. Oh. in the same show <laughs> right that's an interesting show exactly and I was like I've peaked I'm never gonna have this much fun again I, I'm gonna stop uh, but I had to chop off all my hair and dye it brown okay. and I found this place in the Lower East Side I was in New York at the time and this woman I really just walked into a store because I had just gotten the job and went I want to show up to the rehearsal and really look in the part yeah because uh, I was still like a diehard people pleaser and more on how that's not a great combo with dominatrices because oh. <laughs> <laughs> you it, it, it's touch and go you we'll, we'll get to it okay maybe we can't be dominatrixes then. yeah we're <laughs> super people purple people eaters mm. yes <laughs> oh, those two uh and I'm I'm in the middle of getting this haircut and I look around the salon and I see say hey lady why do you have all this victorian porn on your walls okay and it was this tiny little salon and she goes i'm really interested in that period in history that is sort of the uh the origin of bdsm as we know it the visual vocabulary that we have of leather and crops and over the knee spanking and i go wow you're really into this world uh as someone who had been kind of like when I was little, I would play the kidnap game. 
Oh. Oh. Uh, we <laughs> <laughs> That's not a game I'm familiar with. I well, don't think I, I played that it's game. It's not a real game. It's, <laughs> hey, whoever's on a play date with Rachel, tie Rachel to the chair and put a sock in her mouth, and then we're all going to watch Robin Hood. Like, it's, 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 it was just this, I want to get tied up. I always know. I was like, well, I want to get tied up. Uh, and so here's this woman chopping all my hair off and saying, well, I used to be a dominatrix. And I go, oh, well, tell me more. Yeah. And by the end of the haircut, and because the dye took a while to set, I learned a whole lot and she goes you know you're 19 you got a cute little dumper uh yeah great little attitude <laughs> I can, I can, I don't wait know. what's a dumper a but. butt oh okay okay <laughs> took me a minute but I, I was like I know it comes out of butts ah, <laughs> there it is dumps like a truck uh truck, and truck. <laughs> so uh she's like I still know the people there I could put a word in for you and I had an interview in three days nice oh, and wild. uh so I just I went in and uh, it's not, well, I don't know what anyone imagines. It's certainly not a sit-down interview with an HR department. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, no. That's what I thought. No. I, I, I had a resume with me, but I oh, did. it cute. wasn't easy. Well, yeah, that's the thing. I was this, like, 19-year-old, like, type A kind of yeah. perfectionist. At least theatrical resume. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I, can I, was like, I was like, I could do accents. Do they need me to do accents? And she's like, accents, very good, very good. You need to do the accents. Oh, really? Uh, she was, yeah, she was a, a, a Polish, she was a Polish that's immigrant. Cute. With the nicest, gentle giant uh, husband. Oh. But the dungeon was actually this sort of reconfigured apartment oh. in Midtown. It was a rat's nest. Mm. If you can imagine, like, your kooky aunt's house, mm. um, but like underwear everywhere. Okay. <laughs> and like a wall of Who's? lockers. Everyone's oh. underwear. It's like oh. we had, you know, people would come in and change and change into their outfits. And oh. you want to change outfits between sessions. And so then you have, say, a man comes in who wants to be publicly humiliated. And now his underwear have joined the mix. It's it's just, it was very cluttered. It was oh. not a it was not a clean space. So the <laughs> underwear was like a, a decor or it was kind like, like should have been cleaned up? Bars with bras on them. Oh. I mm. wish. I wish it had been a decor a choice. choice. Oh. And it was not. It oh. was just what happens when you throw you know, two dozen early 20-somethings uh, into... A dungeon? <laughs> into a dungeon and expect them to, you know, change change outfits at the drop of a hat mm. uh, for whatever the scene would call for. And that's what you'd find. You know, your outfit for, say, a medical role play session is not your outfit for a cross-dressing session, which is not your outfit for a strap-on session. And Do you have to provide all these outfits? Yeah. Oh, ouch. Except in the cases of borrowing, and, and it's a little... I don't recommend it. Oh, yeah. yeah. J- exactly. Yeah. Because you don't know. Shweddy. Shweddy is one thing. Uh, mm. You have to assume that I can say whatever I want on here, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Assume there's jizz on everything. Yeah. Oh, all sorts of juices. All, all juices. Yes. Everything's <laughs> <laughs> fluidy. <laughs> I knew a dominatrix in New York City, and she talked about like basically having a, a barrier like on your vagina. Mm. Where like, like tape? Almost like a plastic wrap. So like a guy would like want to go down on her and she, he, I'm guessing it's similar to a dental dam. That's some, you um, know, I've, I've never used one of those myself. Yeah. Although, uh, and I'm sure I'm just spilling trade secrets. Yeah. If a guy wants to indicate in a session that he wants to go down on the provider. Yeah. That is called dinner at the Y. Yes, oh. please. That is, it's, it, it's sometimes abbreviated yes, to yes. D-A-T-Y. And it means dinner at the Y, which is like the Y of the legs. It's very clever on <laughs> many levels. Uh, and yet all I can visualize is the village people. Yes, yeah, I'm just imagining, like, take your take your helmet off, take your headdress off before you go down there. (laughs) It's very problematic. I don't want to look at the feathers. It's it's weird. Um, But yeah, that that is something that, uh, and I think that's an interesting question because dominatrices, everyone's limits are different. Yes. So I was intrigued when you bring that up because a lot of a lot of doms will not let the clients touch them at at all. all let alone go down on them, which yeah. depending on who you are, a lot of women, myself included, uh, I get weird about oral sex where I'm okay. like, I can't feel in power while this is happening. Okay, mm. This feels very much like a receiving thing and I'm weird about receiving pleasure. Uh, and so I could never feel 
like, yeah, you do it. You get it. You, know? <laughs> you get it. Like a queening chair is not for me. Okay. Um, do you guys know what a queening chair is? I was going to no. write that down as a question, so thank you. <laughs> a queening chair is yes. um, it's a chair with a hole in it oh. that you just park over their head oh. so that they can, you know, put up energy. They don't have to. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, they could just. She's doing lots of um, tongue uh, gestures. And a lot of neck work. Yeah. It that can looks be My neck's a wimpy neck. It, so, yeah, yes. I would, I would yeah. so if you don't also, and it hurts, it hurts the knees if to 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 squat over oh, someone's yeah. face for a long time. So mm. queening chairs can be pretty helpful. Um, yeah, what that's it, true. That's queen, like a, queening chairs. queening chairs. Queening chairs. Yeah. I like that. It's like a squat, Kirsten. Yeah. If you don't have your queening chair, so you, <laughs> it you is. would like to squat. Or you'd like somebody That's to be right. squatting. Yeah, no chair for me. You've got a squat. Hold on. That, see, but actually, like that's squats. badass. That's its own kind of style yeah. of, of of domination, of topping. Mm-hmm. If you were you were sort of the like a like a personal trainer yeah. uh, mm-hmm. of you know you got to hold that squat. And uh, oh my god, that's, that's my why thing. you liked training. I mm-hmm. could be a dominatrix. You she did trainer. Pilates. I'm gonna tickle your balls with this little Just feather, torture. and you have to hold your squat form. <laughs> yeah, you know that's torture. That's actually oh really gosh. bad. I would hate that so much. It would suck. <laughs> I know. Are you ticklish? Oh, I hate being tickled, and I also hate squats, so I hate it on every <laughs> level. Oh, I thought you were going to be the the tickling the ball one. You you're think not I'm tickle squats. somebody ba- balls? Yeah, you tickle. You're the one tickling their balls. They're holding the squat. You're not squatting. Oh, you're sitting there relaxed. Yeah, I like hate, work I hate, harder. No, bitch. I'm saying I hate receiving it. But you can be a do- you can be a sub and be a lady. Right. You absolutely can. Oh, oh. I just, I, I put myself in the dom position. Good for you. Good. Thank you. Good for you. Because <laughs> I'm not wired that way. Okay. And so when I went and took the job, I thought, well, this is a, it's like an acting job. Yes. Yeah. And turns out, like, if you don't actually have a really strong, uh, like, boundaries, I think are super yeah. important. Absolutely. Being a people pleaser, it's just you kind of don't get the... Um, the formula exactly right mm. because what you, the transactional nature of you're coming here to pay me to do what you want but I really want to make you happy but I mm. what you want from me is for me to be mean to you but I'm not naturally mean and oh, so it's kind of you, yeah. it's easy to get in your head a little bit especially at 19 yeah. That's a, yeah. I mean, you're still forming. And I was cousin. married. I was. I was. A, I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, Wait, you were married oh, when you were doing dominatrix? I was. Ah. In fact, my husband quitting his job was the reason I needed to take this job. Oh, oh. So, so he was cool with it. Well, why did he quit? Ostensibly, oh, he was cool with it, but uh, we're no longer married, so eventually he was not cool with it. Okay, okay. Uh, but it's fine. We talk. It's cool. It's an <laughs> amicable divorce. Seven years later, seven years. It later. took a while to get amicable. <laughs> it was we went through some some, some things take time. Oh, exactly, absolutely. But now yeah. he's he's married. His wife knows he used to be married, but his in laws don't. Oh, which I think is very scandalous. Very That's scandalous. Very scandalous. I know. I was like, don't you be fibbing to your new in laws? That's yeah. no way to start right? the next chapter of your life. How long were I think you married? You just drop it. Of like, I, I was married once to a dominatrix. Just That's exactly the yeah. whole thing at yeah. Christmas. Yeah. Yes. yeah. At yes. Christmas dinner. Oh yeah. <laughs> Mom, dad, fifty years together, so nice to by the way, I used to be married to a dominatrix. And anyway, I love your daughter. It's, that's that's how you slip it in. Yeah. So exactly. you were married maybe for a while. About two years. And you needed to take this job. You communicated about what you were going mm-hmm. I had one question about your interview. Did you wear a business suit? I Without wore a, a I wore pantyhose oh. for sure which I didn't think would be helpful but there is a big pantyhose fetish in a very certain age bracket oh. and, mm-hmm. the teens and the 20 year olds you you <laughs> you got it I was dressed very uh, you know businessy yes. like a pencil pencil skirt and a little blouse yes. uh, and you had your resume I love that I did <laughs> I just I thought it was going to be as legit a job as it could be yes and it didn't it's not they, it's pay, not. they yeah. pay you in cash okay. you know you work whenever you can uh, every place is different of course I'm sure there are places even if it's the legal cat houses in Nevada yeah that you know you're on payroll yeah but uh not here yeah no what, what is a day what is, what would be a day like for you oh boy um are you I, asking about money or oh no ex- I'm asking about the experience oh, okay like, oh just like coming, coming in for a day so oh this is taking me back mm-hmm. I'd come in and the day shift and the night shift would be different so yes if I was working the day shift, I'd usually get there around noon, and uh, our kind of resident muscle, this the the husband of the directress, he would put 
ads up on Backpage, which if you remember Backpage, yes. back before it was seized by the FBI because of FOSTA SESTA and this whole kind of in the guise of stopping child trafficking, they mm. uh, took down Backpage, which is the primary way that sex workers were uh, Advertising, and that's a free like news magazine, right? That's it's a like, lot like a Craigslist. Yeah, exactly, but oh, but online. sexy Craigslist only. <laughs> yes, a little more illicit online? Craigslist. It was online. It was online. Okay. So we would have ads on Craigslist and ads on uh, Backpage, and people would call in. And so I was June. I was Mistress June Ravel. Oh, now I oh. know. I know. <laughs> Were you given this name? Huh. Or did you did you pick it? Yes, I picked it because nice. uh, June is my birthday, and Maurice Ravel is my favorite composer. So it's a very pretentious, like <laughs> I'm making the jerk off gesture name. Uh, but people would call in, and they would you know be fielded by a gal who was usually on the phones, and so we would have somebody every every shift who was sort of the manager. She'd answer the phones, and they would go like, "Is Mistress June in, or can I see June? When does June come in next?" Mm. And so if I came in, usually by the time I was kind of established there would be one or two people asking about my schedule and I could come in and I'd have a two o'clock and a four o'clock already and if that's the case sweet that's my day I've yeah. paid for you know I paid my utilities and uh, my metro card for the month yeah uh, if not you'd have to pull up your own laptop and start submitting ads again okay um, to kind of hustle and get those calls okay and we would also have um, what were called opens so yes. if somebody called and they didn't have a gal in mind, mm -hmm. uh, a provider in mind, I should stop being so gendered. Uh, <laughs> I'm tr it's, a, it's, a, it's an adjustment. I'm working hard. Yeah, I know. We all are. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody would call and would say, I don't know who I want to see, but I know I want to come in at 6. Okay. This person would come in. And then these were so tedious. Everyone who was working yeah. would file in and meet the customer one after another. Okay. And then the customer would pick. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. I know. It was yeah. a little frustrating. It's kind of it's like auditioning. It is. It's a little <laughs> bit of a cattle call. Um, and I will say that while I did not, I didn't have the most clients, I had very loyal repeat clients. But if somebody came in and it was their first time, they'd pick me. Okay. Like, I don't know what it is about my energy, but it's like BDSM 101, approachable. I'm yes. not going to judge you. Yeah. I'm not going to be mad at you. And I also never got clients who actually wanted someone very mean. I never yeah. got. Mm -hmm. They could feel that people pleaser. Mm -hmm. I, and that's the thing. That yeah. I, I really think that, that that energy would come through. Yes. Um, because in that scene, there are, there are male submissives and there are fetishists. And that covers a whole different kettle of fish. So if you're not wired sub, you know, maybe Joe comes in and he really wants to be cross-dressed and berated and humiliated, not me. Just yeah. not going to be a good session for me. I don't I don't like I like being mean now. <laughs> <laughs> but 10 years ago, I was like, I can't yeah. be mean to you. I have to look cute. And <laughs> Didn't use a baby voice. Um, <laughs> could you turn people down if people were like, this is my thing, this is my fetish? Uh, if they asked to see me specifically, um, I kind of had to go in and go for it. Uh -huh. There were really rarely times where I could turn down a session. The only time that would happen is if we were, if there was an actual safety issue, which frankly, like they didn't, they didn't monitor it nearly as well as they could have. Mm -hmm. So like I only stopped a session one time and it was yeah. because we had this gentleman who, who I don't think was, I don't think he had all his marbles. There's no good way to say yeah. it. Mm -hmm. He literally would be like, June, when it comes down to paying my therapist to you, I come to see you anyway. Uh, and I'm like, please don't do that. Yeah. I don't think that's a great idea. And he's yes. like, but I talk to God, and God tells me that you are this person who's going to save me. And I'm like, definitely don't. Yeah. Definitely. This, you're making it good. worse. Yeah. You're making yeah. it worse. And at one point, I had to actually stop the session because his, his was all fantasy. He, he dreamed about being a contract killer. Oh, and so you geez. had to like listen to his stories about all the people he was going to go out and murder Shoot. and put on fake nails and scratch his balls. That was the session. Oh. I was the only you person who... his balls? I had to scratch his balls. Okay. And uh, I was the only person who would see this guy. Literally everyone was like, fuck it. I won't... We oh. won't see Tom. Mm -hmm. um, and we charged him extra, which is the asshole tax, yeah. just because I was the only person who would put up with it. But he, he, he offered to kill a dog for me. Mm. And that's the only time that I was like, this is stopping. Yeah. And I'm going to collect the money from you and walk out of the room and... Uh, 
you're gonna learn from your mistake. Cool. So, so nobody sees Tom. No, no nobody. Tom <laughs> not to my not to to my knowledge. So I don't I don't know. Um, yeah, th- there's a sentence that I never thought <laughs> I don't think has ever been said before until Tom said it, and it's never been said since. Which is, I talked to God last night, June, and God told me that I am gonna lick your mother's asshole. Break your mom's asshole? Lick my mother's asshole. Oh, right. God oh, told wow. him. God told him. And did did that happen? No, it did not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it did. I, I, hope to, I hope not. I mean, look, the boundaries are very permeable in my family. But if that yeah. had happened, I'd, I'd have hoped for an update. <laughs> um, Mom, did Tom lick your asshole? <laughs> <laughs> but I'd love to hear, Just like, checking in. kind of some, like, some of the gamut of things that you'd see. Kind of like that. Like, you mentioned, and, and I know that it's different, different boundaries for different people as far as sexuality. So to me, like scratching balls is touching genitals. So like, yeah. what are some of the things that like you've done or been asked to do that you were like? Eh. What's on the go list and the not go list? Ooh, perfect. So I'm a big uh, fan of the brain and uh, fantasy as sort of. Uh, and of course, like, of course, I'm saying that. Like <laughs> as, a, as a as a lady, I'm like, ooh, the brain is so sexual. Ooh, because that's how you know I'm I'm programmed. And so anytime someone came in with a fantasy, I was like, let's do it, whatever, however weird it is, because fantasy is an amazing way to uh, play out what would be taboo or yeah. uh, or dangerous or, or sometimes outright illegal. That's why yeah. we have so much stepsister porn. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the whole idea of, you know, um, age play, which is a very, mm-hmm. like, kind of controversial Panty aspect hose. of mm-hmm. BDSM uh, of <laughs> and then pantyhose sure uh, but say like the idea of pretend, playing at your partner being a certain age does not make the person uh, a, a sexual deviant if I choose oh, sure. a uh, an adult someone who is you know over 18 yes. and we play at the idea yeah. that they are jailbait uh, that is a fantasy Okay. But it is really, really touchy because you get folks who still don't quite understand the nuance of it. Oh. Mm-hmm. So I'd, I'd, I'd get some of the more like fantasy guys. Um, fetishists were always fine because they were generally smart. The only problem with fetishists is that they talk to you like you're a stewardess because they don't, <laughs> they don't, they don't think of you as like a dominant partner. They don't think of you as like someone above them. So there isn't a lot of respect oh. there. So we would yeah. have a, there was a guy who came in, he's like, I'm here for strap on. And I walk in and he's like pouring yellow tail Chardonnay into a solo cup and doing key bumps of cocaine out of a oh, baggie geez. in his pocket and is like, hey there, babes. You know, like, let me tell you about when I was a roadie for the 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 who. And I'm like, I guess we're in for some story time. And he's like, you're going to do me in the butt, but I'm not no queer. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know, that's, that's this guy's, you know, take. But I, my line was if people would ask, you know, are you going to jerk me off or are you going to do something? It's like, I'm here to cheer you on mm-hmm. I will give you the best pep talk of your life baby mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'm not gonna touch it yeah however the scratching of the balls I made a weird exception for that because he would I would have to put on press on nails yeah oh yes. and so I wasn't even actually touching the, you. the balls oh yeah so you felt a little distance <laughs> yeah it was like that thing that you put on your head you know that that scratches your I hate oh, that oh yes that, the, the little yeah, wire the thing wire thing yes I hate yeah. that. That gives me like a weird nails on the chalkboard feeling, but some people yes. love it. But that's nails how on I, the ball feeling. <laughs> nails on the balls. <laughs> but that's 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 the idea. Yeah. Um, I have done erotic massage sessions, okay. but those were for clients who specifically kind of booked that thing. Mm-hmm. And these are usually repeat clients. They're okay. people that I have already come to understand are respectful of boundaries and who for one for one reason or another are not really on the BDSM spectrum. These were guys that I met who were just, and they, they're just, just lonely. Yeah. These were guys who, whether they were too busy or didn't like dating or didn't feel like they were up for it or had their own hang-ups, usually with their moms, <laughs> uh, did not have a regular girlfriend and had disposable income. And yeah. that is half the reason that I am so pro-legalization of sex work is because yeah. It's just providing a service. And if I had someone that I hit it off with, sometimes they don't. I had a guy who would come in to get spanked, but mm. he was such a lightweight. He was such a little bitch about it. Then when he came back, I go, this isn't actually what you want. He goes, yeah. no, I just, I like you and I like our conversations, but I know we can't date. Oh, and I'm wow. like, well, 
okay, well then let's change the conversation. Yeah. Because yeah. at this point, I'm providing a service, and because I'm a people pleaser, again, this maybe makes me sort of, there's a reason I didn't do sex work at, you know, I did it a finite amount of time. is because right. for me, I hate seeing people upset, and I hate seeing them lonely, and there's a degree of like, well, it doesn't cost me anything to give a hand job, you know, you're, <laughs> like, it's, I, 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 I'm, I'm here and available, and I can see how much it'll make you happy, <laughs> and you're nice. I'll we give just you wanna, a hand. Yeah, yeah, we're just talking about animaniacs, you know, this is yeah. just kind of wild. Were there any other, like, were there any other confusions of like, oh, I want this to be a relationship, or was it pretty well clear cut, even with this person who was saying, I wanted this to be a relationship, but... Obviously, I, I can't. I can't. Yeah. Yeah, and luckily that person never, uh, never made it weird. Mm -hmm. uh, never made it like I want to date you, yeah. June. It was just I really like spending time with you, but I understand that yeah. this is a different mm -hmm. thing. And for better or worse, I would end sessions and immediately flick into this person who I am now and be like, hi, hi, this is my real name, and I have a boyfriend, and that will cost you clients. So oh. for anyone who wants to consider topping, don't do that because then they go, boo, you just shot my fantasy yeah. to pieces. Yeah. Yeah. I want to believe that you're single and that your name is Callista. Yeah. And, <laughs> and that you love scratching my balls. You love scratching my balls. Me with putting on fake nails. water. <laughs> you're perpetually Brazilian. Yeah. Uh, you never grow hair anywhere. It's, 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 uh, but I, it's just a difference in how, what people's imagination and facility there yeah. is. What um, would be your favorite customer? Like what, what would they do? How would, Hmm. Oh, you know, back when I smoked cigarettes, mm -hmm. uh, there was a client who would come in. We called him Smoking Steven, <laughs> and that was not his real name because no, everyone was either Steve or Mike. They had no <laughs> creativity <laughs> ever. Steve, Mike, Steve, Mike, some John. It's John. like improv. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is everyone like Steve? We all have like three names. <laughs> Jenkins oh. and, uh, yeah. Jenkins and McGillicuddy. Jenkins. Yes. <laughs> everyone throws in McGillicuddy to when, when they're starting to be cute. Uh, he would book four sessions, four hour sessions. So he would come in at nine and would stay until 1 a.m. And uh, his whole thing was he would bring in music. And he used to be in the music industry, so he was very pretentious about, I'm going to play really deep cuts and like B-sides from Quadrophenia and blah, 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 and would kind of talk down to you if he didn't think that you could, you know, match his music knowledge. <laughs> uh, but generally like a good dude, good energy, and all I would have to do was smoke in the room with him in lingerie, blow the smoke in his face. Oh, that's great. Um, and he had a little... It looked like a, it's like a, imagine a ball gag, but instead of a ball, it was a tube. Mm. And so I would have to like blow the smoke into his mouth. Oh, Interesting. Wow. And then one time I drooled and he's like, no, that's what I want. I want you to drool into my mouth. And I'm oh. like, okay, that's... That's Art. okay. That's <laughs> that's gonna happen. And that's what you want too. And then it would just be like four hours of we're gonna talk and oh you're gonna rub my feet. That's great. I will have another cigarette. And then you you, you I don't know if any of you have ever smoked cigarettes oh, yeah, before, but at the end. Oh, yeah. And then you're walking out of there. It's like 1 a.m. and you're wired. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, I was going to say, this sounds like a terrible client. Four <laughs> hours of smoking. Oh, yeah, God. but you walk out with like 600 bucks. Yeah, nice. okay, and right. so that's the thing. It's like you're, you're, you're so 19 really turning 20. Client. It's somebody who pays. I Like I said, there's a reason I didn't do this for an extended period of time. So when you ask my favorite client, and yeah, I give you, I was like, well, I was set for a week. Yeah. Uh, but it wasn't. The worst, but maybe I'm not setting a very high bar for my clients. <laughs> no, that seems, I can see that yeah. being fun because I can see other things being daunting, especially like if you're being asked for things that you're like, I'm not, I'm not good at being the yelly person. I'm yeah. good at being in lingerie and smoking and that's dominatrix enough for me. So I yeah. can see that like. I'll talk, I'll talk, I'll talk rock operas till the cows come home. <laughs> if you're rubbing my feet and you, oh, you have to get up every half hour and do some coke, fine. Man, that's everyone, everyone there. Everyone would just bring All of them did coke, that was All crazy. of the clients would, bring, would come, would, 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 would bring coke. It was huh. weird. Uh, and I know that you ha aren't working as a dominatrix now, but just to anyone who's listening who's like, I'm looking for a dominatrix. I know like that website has come down and, and you were working in New York City, but I don't know if you mm -hmm. have like a handle on anyone who's looking for a dominatrix currently. Oh, dang. Um, it's really hard because a lot of the social media, especially in the wake of FOSTA SESTA, a lot of social media crackdown has mm -hmm. happened. And I'm okay. sure that that either of you in different situations have seen, you know, the crackdowns on certain hashtags that... Mm -hmm 
you can't even like put the word sex even if it's in like a sex positive context mm. you know that's why you see people using threes or writing s e c k s it's because now i know uh, <laughs> you know the blame goods. china but i mean <laughs> I, I say that mostly jokingly but yeah blame you know like tiktok and china and this idea of you know this crackdown on on sex positive media which is really infuriating mm. but if you if you look for uh, you can look for hashtags. I know a lot of uh, dominatrices are active on Instagram. Mm. I'm sure there are places on TikTok you could find them, but oh, I'm sure. an old lady and I don't do TikTok. <laughs> um, but you kind of have to know the code to hashtag using like a three instead of an E type of thing for sex. Maybe. I mean, I think you could probably try the old faithfuls of, you know, like hashtag BDSM or yeah. hashtag DOM or, yeah. or you know, uh, with just an M or with a double M E. Um, there are websites like Eros and uh, another one that I can't think of, but those are typically for full service sex workers. Mm -hmm. So that would be like an act, you know, you'd be looking for intercourse. Um, and that's obviously an even more illicit scene that is even harder to navigate. But if someone yeah. were just looking for a dominatrix, then ah, I wish I could be of a, a, a better <laughs> help, but I'm not keyed into that world as yeah. much as I used That's to still, be. still, I yeah. think, more than I would even oh, think. Yeah. I haven't tried to hashtag sex. No. But we were we were going to hashtag, like, let's talk about sex for just, like, our pictures and stuff talking about. And I'm curious if we would get shadow banned or banned in general or, like, you know, yeah, how that would work. blocked off or what. Yeah. But, but no. that's good to know. Now we'll know to use the three. Three yeah. instead of E. Now we know. Yeah, use that leet, that leet text. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we have a caller. It's Timid Tina, and she's got to have a question for you just to give you what's Ooh. up. <laughs> Tina? Hello. Hey, Tina. Hello. Hi. Hi, Tina. All right, you are you are live with the Adult Buddy Finders. Hello and welcome. Yes, we're so happy to have you. And on our show today, as you know, is a Dominatrix Rachel Music. So we understand you have a question, and we'll let you fire away when you're ready. Yeah. Hi, Rachel. I'm so happy to be talking to you. Um, basically, I'm I'm 25, and I've been dating my boyfriend for about two years now. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be mean, but I would say that our sex life is pretty vanilla and not even, like, the brand name. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the vanilla trademark. Vanilla. Yeah. <laughs> and so I just want to know in your expert opinion how, you know, we can spice things up and how maybe I can kind of get a little dommy in the bedroom, if you will. Ooh, fantastic. So that would have been my next question, Tina, is where do you fit on the spectrum? Are you switchy? Are you looking to dominate your boyfriend? I am also kind of, I'm totally new. I don't know anything. So, All right. I mean, that's kind of like where I feel the tingle. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> it's always good to follow the tingle. I think that's a, I think yeah. that's a, I think that's a really great place to be. So, um, I can give you plenty of examples of ways that you can sort of titillate your boyfriend, but all of them will be useless unless you have a real sit down kind of chat with him first. Um, I find that there is plenty of room to surprise your partner, but the best way to make sure that you get a little bang for your buck, so to, to be crass, uh, <laughs> is to manage his expectations. Do you know if this is something that he's interested in and hasn't broached with you, or is this something that will be a total shot in the dark? <laughs> Um, I think it's a little bit more of a shot in the dark. Okay, okay. <laughs> we well, both kind of come from a little bit of like a conservative background. So we just kind of started really spicing things up. Um, so I ooh, kind of ooh. just am ready to take oh, this yeah. next level. I think he's very open to the conversation. Though, well, tell I definitely me, think it'd be something he's into. Well, tell me more about that. What is that you've, you've recently tried that, that, you know, registers as spicy to you? Because everyone's calibrated a little bit differently. Okay. Well, I feel like you're just going to laugh. <laughs> I won't. I, I, I won't. And if anything, I will laugh with you. So. I mean, what's been titillating for us personally is like, you know, kind of introducing maybe some new orifices. Oh. Nice. You know, playgrounds. I love that. I love that. The, the, the playground is. Out there. Go 
Tina. I know. <laughs> you thought you were going to get laughs, and you just got ooh. Yeah, we're uh, we're excited. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's uh, I mean, a whole new world. Um, and that's actually really exciting. And if I can, uh, both of you or only one person's kind of. Uh, like who's explored whom? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. If there are new orifices, is it? Is it? I would say it's definitely a little bit one-sided right now. Okay. Some of us are more adventurous than others. Mm. <laughs> okay. Um, so without getting a real, real strong handle of y'all's communication style, um, is he something? Is he somebody that you kind of ease ease things into, or or is he game for? for whatever because two years that's a pretty substantial time especially if part of that was COVID which we know is dog years in relationships yeah oh yeah no definitely um yeah I think easing into it is definitely probably the way to go you know just to (laughs) don't want to scare him (laughs) great oh absolutely absolutely and and uh in my experience I can tell you I have had to introduce every male partner I've ever had into the scene. So oh, you, no. you'd you think it might be the other way around. Exactly. And a lot of people do think that, you know, guys just want to scoop up a girl and, and get them as kinky as possible. Yes. And maybe it's the type of, you know, nerdy guys that I have attracted in the past, but generally you have to kind of hold their hand every step <laughs> in the way of the way. And um, if that's the case, babe, that's a good sign, Tina, because it means you don't have like a closet sadist jerk off on your hands. <laughs> Um, oh my God. If, if you ever, you know, take a guy home and say, you can do anything you want to me, and they clap their hands together and go, oh, goody. Oh, no. It's like, you know, <laughs> maybe, maybe watch it. Maybe, yeah. maybe it's a red flag. Um, if right. you want to ease him into it, there are a whole different couple of ways. So I'll give you a couple of strategies that you can use. You can find movies that are not porn movies, but that are maybe sensual or erotic movies, like Secretary, Ooh, like, yeah. uh, now that's way too, way too dark, but like The Night Porter is another one if he's sort of a, a, a criterion cinephile person. Yeah, right right away. Uh, and Secretary is, I mean, I still think oh. James Spader is attractive. And have you seen him? He looks like the bloated corpse of James Spader, but I'd still, I'd, so st- good I'd still let him so do good. anything to me because of that movie. Secretary? Mm-hmm. It's very good. Um, <laughs> Specifically for like women taking charge, it's le- they're it's often played for jokes in um, in media, and this is actually kind of a, a thing that chaps my ass too. You have like you know the like full latex body suit in yes. Euro Trip, and the you know oh, unpronounceable yes. safe word, or mm. or like uh, Oksana in Goldeneye, who if, if that's the one, the the Bond movie where she breaks his neck with yes. her thighs. <laughs> yes, it is. I had I Another had a client like. who once asked me if we could recreate that scene, and I was like, I I can't legally break your neck. Um, and he's like, Can you try? Can you please? Play? Please, please, please try. Oh, um, Lord have mercy. <laughs> so, so, Tina, I would say that like there are ways that you can either show him something that intrigues you, and it's a really great conversation starter. As a well, is that something you'd ever want to try? Is that something that that turns you on? If you want to expand your horizons and go straight to porn, I know that some couples are really iffy about if they watch it, if they share it, what they watch. Um, but I think it can be very interesting to go, this is what privately I find very arousing and erotic, and I'd like to share that with you, not as a not as a directorial advice or trying to script something for you, but as possibly inspiration. Also, never underestimate the power of the written word. Mm. You, there is nothing wrong with either tracking down some erotica, which first oh, off, yes. As like, <laughs> as someone who literally narr- like I narrate. That's my that's my day job. There is, uh, a book or a anthology or a whole series for anything you're into, and it may be less intimidating to your boyfriend to go, hey, take this trip and here's an audible. Here's an <laughs> audible credit that I have. Maybe give a listen to this. And, and there are a lot of ways that you can sort of put something in their court and let them digest it on their own time in a way that doesn't feel like they're being watched. Because I found that this is also the case with yeah. men is that if you put them on the spot sure. um, and say, here's something I'd like, a lot of times they hear, I'm not getting what I want. Yeah. Or I don't like oh, what yeah. you're doing. Where there's I think I hear things like that sometimes too. A lot of, a lot of people do. If you're kind of programmed to hear the negative or to yeah. or to anticipate someone else's needs I'm a loser. at the yeah, mm-hmm. at the expense of your own. So there's a way to to say uh, there's something I'd like to explore. 
but I in addition to not in place of yeah. and, and uh so I don't I feel like I'm only half answering your question because I feel like you also want like the dirty stuff because there is also a universe. That's a great star. I love that. Oh, good. I love James Spader. So there you. <laughs> it's. Awesome. I think it's the voice. Um, <laughs> but I do love that. Start with communication. Yeah. Talk about it. That's great. Talk, that, a, talk oh, with your husband <laughs> about how it, it about is. your spanking. <laughs> exactly. Well, the, the 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 brain's the biggest erogenous <laughs> zone, and that's actually why erotica can be really helpful because sometimes uh, especially if you get a good writer it's putting into words the feelings that we often don't have expressions for like yeah. all mm-hmm. I know is I don't know I watched Aladdin when I was really little and when Aladdin got tied up I felt really weird and tingly and I have chased <laughs> that feeling ever since <laughs> yes yes <laughs> Yeah, you're like, your Jessica Rabbit is hanging from that chain and you feel all kinds of weird things. But then eventually you find, uh, you know, you, you can find an author or a scenario that, that really hits it for you. And it is uh, is always good in a communicative way to um, kind of yes and and like positively reward your partner or spouse by here's something that you did and here's a way we can take it further or here's something I would I would love to experience what your submission is like or here's one more way that we can deepen our intimacy and it would be how you're such a here's just an example just a script take this however you want Tina but like you've been working so hard and you always get up at 7 a.m. and do your squats and have your shake or whatever. <laughs> now, what if you did what I want you to do just for the next two hours? Oh. And that could be you take his phone and you lock, you know, you lock his phone away and you make sure that like for the next two hours, it's just going to be you and I and let's sit down and hash out what is the most, what is your weirdest fantasy? What's something that you don't think? That's actually, what's something you don't think I would be interested in? Oh, neat. In that scenario, I want to sit on his lap as he squats. Can that work? As he squats? Yeah. Gosh, that sounds very challenging. I, I love sitting that's... on a guy's back when he does push-ups. <laughs> oh, and that's, and that's, I think and you that's, to get yeah. on his back, too. Oh, yeah. If you think of a squat, you can't really sit there. Oh, I'll climb on him then. You'd have to be kind of yeah. wrapped on him like a monkey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hang in. yeah. Squat some more. 20 more. Oh, yeah. That's, that. I mean, also, that's, that's and, and actually, Kirsten brings up an amazing point. Thank you. Squats are hot. That mm. if you take something that is already a part of your life, you can kind of kinkify it. Mm. You mm. can, it, yeah, you can make things like, hey, there's a chore he doesn't like to do. And, and this is sort of like basic BDSM lifestyle 101, but it can be really fun for flirtation and trying to integrate things in a way that doesn't feel like starting small is always smart here because if you try and throw all of your chips in on this, I'm going to go out and buy three different outfits and I'm going to unplug the phones and <laughs> you know we're going to have this. You're asking for disaster and you're asking for disappointment. So you integrate things really little. Like, hey, if you finish the unloading the dishwasher by the time I get back from walking the dog then you get to like I get to sit on your face or like (laughs) you get a a hand job while I watch this movie and if you don't then I get to spank you or I get to figure out uh, how sensitive your nipples are Mm -hmm. you know if it's if it's a game of playing then uh you know the couple that plays together stays together so (laughs) I hope I hope that's helpful yeah, well, I love that. <laughs> and I can tell Kirsten's life is changing, too, so. <laughs> like, oh, my God, I'm so into yeah, this. Kirsten is blushing, and I think she's, like, packing her bag to go home for some reason. I don't know what's <laughs> happening exactly, but. <laughs> I have a whole conversation to have. <laughs> yes. And you know how now. I do, I do. Uh, thank it, you so much for calling, Tina. Yeah. It, it's so awesome to hear from you, and hopefully these are actionable items, and, and that it, it, it leads to what you're looking for. I want an update. Yes. I can't wait to try it. I'll let you guys know how it goes. Yeah, Amazing. Thank you. And Rachel said uh, she'd love an update, so you'll have to get her on the Instagatrix, the .instagatrix. Uh, we'll get all that information on our show notes, but uh, you'll have to give her an update on how it all turns out. 
I will. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> I, it was very informative. I mean, I feel like we could ask questions all oh day God, and like yes. get to know more and more and more because uh, those stories are super fun. Aww. Yeah, and it's so interesting. It's and it's interesting too because you said full service, which mm-hmm. one of our guests also was talking about. She did um, happy endings, mm-hmm. yeah. massages and happy endings. Yes. And I I don't know. In my head, I thought dominatrix would be full service, but I guess not really. A lot of people come in thinking because they've yeah. seen they've seen pornos where they yeah. go, you know. Yeah. The, the guy gets tied up and then the girl has sex with him. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's you're like, not, sorry, that's not what, that's, <laughs> yeah. we are trafficking in, in, in the mind and in yeah, fantasy. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, but yeah, you got to disappoint some, you got to disappoint some people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, maybe you get back into it now that you're not as people pleasing as you once were. Yeah. <laughs> you think? Uh, I I don't know. I don't know. Now most of the most of the books I narrate are erotica anyway. Oh, perfect. So oh, I nice. get, I, I still get to work on that. Tell us where we can find you online. Oh, dang. Uh, you can find me. Uh, the only social media I really use is Instagram, and even that's fleeting. But okay. it's um, at the.instigatrix, as in instigator, but a lady, instigatrix. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's that's just about the only place people can find me. But uh, my production company is Shot and Frau, okay. and that is where we're putting out some short films and a, a web series. Oh, cool. uh, so that's that's how people can keep up with uh, the things we got going on. Is Amazing. your is your books and stuff on Instagram? My mm. books are on Audible. Audible. So if you pop in Rachel Music, wherever Rachel audio music. books are sold, you can listen to some grade A alien porn, oh, fun. which I got the market corner done. That's oh, exciting. Nice. <laughs> well, that's really cool. Yeah. And when I saw your hashtag, I thought it was Instagram. I'm dominatrix, so instigator uh, oh. yeah, as a woman is very interesting too. See, that would have been a great like a, <laughs> like a portmanteau. That's a very I, had, I should have thought of that. Uh, it's been so cool to learn. Oh my from gosh! You. Yes. Oh, thank you guys. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Of course, it's been a pleasure. Hanging around with you. Thank you. Yeah, that was a great episode. Amazing to learn more about a dominatrix. Yes. I, I do. Like, I, I feel like we could have, like, multiple episodes and just, like, go into, like, what was this session like? What was this session like? I know I could. I yeah. want to know more, especially about that squatting. <laughs> are you going to do it? Because you are, you've are. you been a personal trainer. You did Pilates, which is, I think, the most torturous. I like Pilates. Maybe bar. Bar is more torturous than Pilates. Oh, yeah. But yeah, bar is evil. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. It's so much. <laughs> but uh, you did Pilates, which is a, a form of slight torture torture you want to like make people squat and set on them somehow <laughs> some way <laughs> so maybe we'll find out maybe as this show goes on we'll see if you get into this yeah even I'll in keep, your personal life i'll keep you all updated on <laughs> on my dominatrix slash fitness instructor uh life. journey <laughs> we have you and we have tina so we'll see who gets into it first yes right <laughs> Um, and of course, if you want to know more about what we talked about, and if you want to know more about Rachel Music, you can check that out on our show notes and on our website, adultbuddyfinders.com. Yes. All, All right. right. Rachel, you have anything to say before they take off? Before we take off? You bet. Listen, you sick little reprobates. I want you to get off your scrawny little asses and pick up that phone. That's right. Pick up your phone with those clumsy, sweaty little fingers. I know what you've been doing with those hands. You know what you're going to do now? You know what you're going to do for me? Shh. You know what you're going to do for me? Look at me. That's right. You're going to subscribe, and you're going to share the ever-living fuck out of this podcast. You hear me? Good boy. Oh I, am, I am nervous. I want to share now so bad. <laughs> I think I've already shared, but I'm going to do it again. I like that you're nervous, and I'm like, yes, I must do it. Let's do it. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Well, we we're going to share whatever she says. I hope you do, too, because I'm, I'm dominated. <laughs> and I'm just titillated. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, Rachel. Thank, Thank you, Liz. Thank you so much. <laughs>